Good morning, folks. Eat chip with contentment. It's a beautiful morning here at contentment. It's uh, mid June. It's about uh, seven something in the morning, and it's 40 degrees. It's a uh, good working weather today, although the wind might pick up and it'll get warmer. Probably get up to about 85. But uh, we got to go up the mountain and get the rest of our timber. And we can't do that until uh, the roads are open. Well, the roads just opened, uh, but now we've got to do some work on Dumpy uh, because both of Dumpy's springs in the front uh, have issues that we got to take care of before we can load this thing. <laughs> So right there is Dumpy's, uh, this is the rear end of Dumpy's front leaf spring. And I don't know if you can tell, but at the top, near those rivets, it's been welded. That's because some time ago it broke, and uh, instead of replacing it, they just welded it to the frame. Well, it's got to be replaced because things are wiggling around uh, on the suspension. we got to get that fixed. So that hanger's got to be replaced, and the one on the other side has got to be replaced as well. They're both broken. So before we can go haul timber up the mountain, we got to fix these. Otherwise, we could have a pretty bad accident. Okay, so we'll try this. It's a 14,000-pound farm jack holding up the frame to relax the leaf spring a little bit. And I know it's relaxed uh, because, as you can see, the nut has dropped down. Uh, uh, it was up which means there was, there was weight on it. And then, just in case, I put a, <clears throat> a little support here on the leaf spring so that in case it wants to pop down when I unbolt it, it, uh, it can't go very far. By the way, that pin is one and one eighth, and the nut on the other side is one and one eighth. Because the truck is tilted, it still is hanging up. I can't get the pin out. It won't loosen it enough for me to pop it out raise the and support the truck in the center and then it all, the whole axle and frame and assembly comes up evenly and maybe that'll keep it straight where i can get it off well that appears to be the ticket folks jacket in the middle of the vehicle so it all comes up evenly and uh i can turn this by hand now although not perfectly I suspect that this pin may be bent. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, this thing's pretty worn out. You see how oval it is? It should be round. It's pretty beat up. And uh, here's the pin. It's pretty beat up, too. I'll be replacing it. I noticed that this pin, the bolt, is a... Looks like a grade 5 based upon those three little tick marks on it a grade eight would have uh tick marks all over it but uh, yeah we'll go back with the grade eight so the new bracket has four holes on the underside to fit one two three but there's not a fourth one on this one there may not be one on the other one either but uh, i know i'm going to have to pull this rivet or the bracket won't fit so I'm going to have to grind this rivet off that fits this cross member and get that one and that one. And of course, i got to cut this whole bracket off because it's welded on. <sighs> Say hello to my little friend. You ever seen a solar-powered angle grinder before? Come on. Oh, come on. Oh. There you go. That's taking too long. Let's see if we can try a cutoff wheel. Okay, now we got it cut off and ground down smooth as best we can. Here's the bracket. Here's the bracket. Whew, that is quite a bit of wallering there. <laughs> Glad we're replacing it. We'll get a coat of paint on this thing. And then we've got to remove this bushing also. Because as you can tell, it's old and worn out. 
Something that I learned from Thomas Schmidt at Thomas Schmidt Homestead is that these bushings don't just slide on out. You gotta force them out and he suggested burning the rubber out first to make it easier. So I've got a propane cylinder, got a fire extinguisher just in case. Here we go. Okay, so we got the rubber hot enough to melt it uh, so we could push that center out, the centers out of it. Now we gotta find a way to get the rest of that thing out of there. Okay, so here we are about an hour later. <laughs> um, I was able to pry the rubber out of there, but now I'm having to use one of my favorite screwdrivers to get this thing, to get this outer cylinder out of there. And she finally popped out. Just so you can see, that's what it took to get it out. <laughs> okay, all cleaned and shiny because of a little brush on my screwdriver that I made fit. <laughs> okay, after several hours of trying, <laughs> <laughs> we got that thing pressed in the new bushing I'll show you how I did it on the next one so this bushing has proven to be a lot more difficult to get out of there I don't know man this thing looks like it's welded in there um, I've been hitting it with penetrating oil heat everything I can throw at it off and on for the past several days and it just does not want to come out. It just doesn't. I about have split the bushing uh, casing about halfway through so far. And by that point, the other one just slipped right out. But this one, this one is being a real bear. All right, finally, we're starting to get some movement. It's pushing it through. Oh, finally. All right, so here's how I plan to get this new bushing back into that spring. I have the bushing and I have two large washers. Now these washers are made to fit over the edge of the bushing casing without disturbing the center. Okay, so it just fits over it I don't know if you, like that. Um, it's also helpful if the washer is bigger than the outside of the spring as well so that when it cinches up, it hits it and stops it. Okay, then I have another washer, goes on the other side. Then I have a long bolt. Longer than, well, it needs to be longer than what you need to go through the spring, and it's gotta have a lot of thread, okay? So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this washer, I don't know if I'm too close, you can't see this or what. Take this washer, place it over. I'm gonna place the bolt on one end, like that, okay? Then I'm gonna line it up with the edge of the spring, okay? And on the other side of the spring, I'm gonna place this washer and the nut that goes on this thing. Tighten the nut and it will pull this bushing through into the spring when it locks up against both of these washers evenly, then you'll know that you're centered inside the spring. At some point, you're gonna run out of thread. So what you do is you back off the thread and add a spacer. In this case, I got the gigantic nut. Put the washer back on and keep tightening until you get it where you want it. That's how you do it. Okay, see that? I wanna make sure this is nice and straight. I think I might put a little WD or something like that on there too to lubricate it, help move it through more easily. I've already made sure that the inside of this spring is clean, so there shouldn't be any hangups. Got my other washer and my nut on this side, as you can see. As you can see they're bigger than the spring, okay? So that it all cinches up nicely. Okay. So I wanna be a little wild at this. <laughs> This nut is a one and an eighth. The bolt head is a one and an eighth. The bolt size itself is three quarter. And for a replacement bolt or pin, as they call it, for this, um, you'll want to make sure that you get a bolt that has enough smooth surface on it, no thread, to go all the way through the bushing. 
and to extend far enough on either side of the spring so that when you put the uh, spring hanger in, the smooth side goes through the spring hanger as well. The secret to this is having a washer that will cover the whole thing and even the spring, but will not interfere with the center, that center piece, because you think about it, when you're tightening that, if you have a, a, a washer that's interfering with that, it will tend to push this through instead of the ca the outer casing and that could damage the bushing. So. Okay, now look at the wear on that hole and on that one and that one. Apparently it had been broken long enough to cause some pretty serious wallering back and forth. So uh, I guess the lesson would be if you know you got trouble with the spring, fix it before you drive it anymore. Oh yeah, and don't weld it to the frame either. <laughs> That's just dumb. <laughs> Actually, it's just kind of lazy. Okay, well, I, I do remember recommending grade eight bolts, but I don't know if I mentioned that a locking flange nut like this is probably best for this application. So, grade eight also. All right, so Dumpy's feeling a little springier. That's good. We've got those spring hangers replaced. And uh, uh, we're reminded of another lesson with farmers, how when something breaks, they typically don't have time to wait for a part to come in or whatever, so they just weld it. And they had that thing welded to the frame and the other one broke and and so um yeah so we got them fixed <clears throat> and hopefully we'll have many years of good service out of the springs and spring hangers